All right, guys, welcome back to Prop Design. We're going to be taking a look at some students' work today. Let's do some crit. So um, we'll start first. You guys chime in. Uh, excuse me, the artist will chime in and uh, tell us what they're working on, the direction they're going, and then if anyone else has any of their comments after they're done talking. So, Anthony, this is yours right here. Okay, so obviously you're working on the, uh, the Star Wars prop design, okay, adding some other props, okay? So here's a bounty hunter ship that you're working on. Um, switch over here. Oh, I have two of those, don't I? Yeah. Okay, that's my bad. Maybe when I copied and pasted them off. Okay, so here we go. So we have that was the bounty hunter. This is your first order. Yeah, that's the new name for the Imperials in the. Yeah. Star Wars. Okay, so that's your Imperial vessels, right? And then here is a couple Tie Fighters that you're working on, right? Um, you didn't have to go, it's not a bad thing that you worked in tone, you don't have to work in tone. Sometimes it's a little bit easier to see your line work, you know, but I just wanted to mention that to you because if you're roughing something out, as long as it looks r readable and workable. Right. So let's start here first with your bounty hunter ship, okay? Um, my, my first comments when I saw this, and you guys chime in too if you have any comments, all right? Um, when I think of a bounty hunter, I'm thinking someone, somebody who's dangerous, who has lots of weapons. And my first concern when I saw these is they felt a little blocky to me. So when I think of like, you know, remember Boba Fett's ship? Yeah. Had that huge round curve and it had some like sharp angles because it was like a circle cut off, you know what I mean? And it, it, it had a sort of a very uniqueness to it. I like what you're doing here. But when I think of bounty hunters, I want to see something maybe a little bit more aggressive. And I think it's really easy. Um, I think you have a great base shapes here. But imagine, like, for example, this guy here. Imagine if you had, hold on a minute here. Why is it not? Let's go back to brush, 100%. There it is. Okay, that's probably just the lag that we get. So when I look at this ship here, I think it's very cool. But imagine if I come over and if you ended up with some type of a cool wing structure that might move on both parts does that make sense uh -huh. like maybe it can go up and down change in flight um maybe the wing's not there maybe if i go back a couple steps here maybe i make the wing up on the top maybe part of the wing connects here and comes downward see what i'm getting at yeah, yeah. something that to add more because right now when i first look at these props especially for a bounty hunter bounty hunters are bad ass right that i mean that's not like a safe job that's something that somebody does who's really good at, you know, they have all these little tricks and trades and they can bring stuff out. You know, I, so I think when I think of bounty hunters, I'm thinking about mercenaries. Right off the top, for some reason, my mind went right into the last um, Riddick movie. Remember where they had all the bounty hunters and they all had different weapons, they had different specializations. This, to me, is still fitting in this shape right here. It's just sort of a simple cube, but what's easy to do is you can come to these i mean like this is really cool i love that slanted front right in here i think that's working nice but you can easily come in here and just we need to pop that silhouette more so to get that silhouette to come out if you add some type of cool wing that's coming off the back take a look at like a manta ray okay look at how the sides of the manta ray come out they have that long tail look at something in nature that might allow you to add something to this and then ma it makes it look a little bit more um, you know, a little bit more ominousing and a little bit more evil and adds a little bit more to the that feel of a bounty hunter. You know what I mean? Yeah. That makes sense? So that, that's what I would... Because same thing here. This feels like a great center section for a ship. So does this. It, minus the little guns up here on the top, right? Yeah. <laughs> There's a little cheese ball. A little more, uh... Yeah, but these are all, again, these are all... So this is just, look, that's basically a box. You know, this is a box turned at the other angle you know so break out of that box and add a couple more i mean like i, I really like that slant down here and then you have this cool window that's round you have some so you have a round against a straight edge shape so you're you're having opposite angles come together which makes things very interesting okay um but then in here i just this is probably one i don't like the most because there's a lot of just boxy 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 that was my first one so. oh, and that's okay you know how it's gonna your first one's always your worst one right you know, so I, that's what I would do. I would actually, I'd probably take this guy right here without a doubt. Um, and then I would probably even take these two. I was even wondering what if you combine parts of these two together? Mm -hmm. You know, like if you took this 
and copied and pasted and put him up on the top here like this and then add some type of cool wing or something to that it's going to really change the look and feel of that okay for for the bounty all right as far as the imperial drop ship goes it's a drop ship so it's not going to have as much armament on it um it's you know th you're doing this as a, a drop ship for troops correct okay so um to me I'm liking sort of the direction more of this one, more than any of them, and there's a, just a distinct reason for that. The reason why that one feels a little bit more appealing to me, let me zoom in there, is because this guy with the fin looks like it would have a hard time landing and dropping off troops with the fin down below. Because with a drop ship, we're gonna see it come in and land, troops get off, it's gonna take off. It might have light, it might, it's, gonna have, might, it's gonna have armament, it's like a helicopter. They usually have one gun, and some base armament that's it and it comes in it drops off troops or whatever and takes off so i think this is feeling much more in that category okay the only thing is is just be careful of some of your 90s in there you know that are flattening stuff up so i like what you have up in here we're getting some obtuse angles you're getting some other things and i think that's starting to work well to add the fact that it is a you know an imperial based you know imagine what would happen if I took this surface right here and I extruded that forward and I had these like prongs that sort of came out of the front here that might make it a little bit more menacing this comes up and just flattens right here do you see that it goes straight across what would happen if we got in there and you found a way to maybe there's like a round surface or something that's part in here and it recedes back and then we have you know, like something, and I'm just trying to find a way to divide up the shapes a little bit more and overlap. Try to avoid all this, you know, hardcore angles hitting. You can add some little roundness in there. I like this up on top. I thought that was pretty cool on that. It's like a little solar, yeah. you know, panel. I think that's really cool, but then take the fin part out, you know. So what's, what's neat to me is when I'm looking at what you have here, you actually have some good ideas that you could actually mix between the two. You know, like I like the front end of this guy of what's happening here, but then when I get back here, it gets too boxy. So, you know, what if you take part of the front of this guy, find a way to get, remember what happens when you have a complementing shape. She did that very well on the other one. If you have a round against a hard edge, it's going to get that, it's going to, that area is going to pop. So that's not a bad idea to do that for the cockpit. Anytime you have any type of contrast, that's going to really work. Um, Back here, you know, this looks okay. It looks like, you know, it could open up. Troops could get out. That's working. But just, you know, I don't know. It's so even if I came in here and I put an overlap of some type of a, of a corner shape like that, overlapping some of this so it's not just such straight lines in there, I think that would help your, your prop quite a bit. Okay? Um, one, one thing about this. Uh, now, the wing, the um, little landing wing on the uh, back. This, Yeah. Okay. I think that's, that looks weird because it's right next to the door. No, because, it, I mean, technically troops could get out and they could go down this way and get off, right? Okay, so I mean, that could still fit. Okay. could have a dual purpose there. My main thing is is getting you out of that box. Right. And, and first thing to have a more, uh, uh, to have a better silhouette feel. And once we do that and get that out, it enables us to, add a lot more then you start dealing with your 90 degree angles and so on remember this is an evil this is you know the imperial there should have be a certain feel to it like when we look at it it makes us feel like uh, you know and i think when you get those hard edge in there um it, it's bringing us back a little bit more you know a little boring um okay looking at your tie fighters here um i think these are pretty cool you know the one thing i have noticed sometimes they don't get into a lot of organic shapes I really like how you have this coming forward this way, but I'm just wondering, instead of it going flat across, remember flat kills, you're doing the obtuse thing, but what if this was rounded a little bit? You know, like it had a rounded top and then it came out a little, you know what I mean? And maybe it rounds back a little, it has an organic quality to it. You know, would that make it look a little, maybe bring it a little bit more inviting? And if not that, just find a way. I mean, this looks like it's like, eh, it's just hit a wall and it's been flattened completely. I would find a way to get in there and maybe change that so it's not so flat. Um, maybe I could tilt it at a, a little bit more of an angle. 
Yeah, and, and especially avoid, I mean, you're, it's basically doing this. It's, it's literally going up over straight across and then in like that. So what if it wasn't straight across and we ended up getting something that has more of a, a tilt or a light curve to it and then maybe comes back together. You know what I mean? Maybe And then maybe it curves underneath. Maybe you have a straight line against a curve. That's going to do a lot more to get that shape to pop out than what you have there. Okay. Um, I like the cockpit. You know, they, there's a basic cockpit they always have. Yeah. You know, they, you can't really, you know, that's... It won't say TIE Fighter. It, it, you it, exactly. You have to have that. But there are a couple little things you can do, and I think you're starting to, you know, see how you have, like, this armament system up here, some type of a weapon, right? You could still have that cockpit, and you could add something onto it like this. Like, imagine if there's something round in the center here. You have the cockpit. There's, like, a protective metal casing, and then you have these lights that come out of it, and that's a sort of... It's almost like a, a mask. You know, one thing I, I learned in my, in my sketchbook when I draw a lot of ships in sketch... A lot of times ships look like parts of armament. Like a ship looks like when I draw in, in a type of ship, it looks like the part of a, like a samurai shoulder pad or an elbow pad. Um, so what I'm getting at here is you can take like a mad, imagine a, a, a breathing respirator that goes over the mouth and how if that covered part of the front here, you can still have the roundness of the cockpit but we put that cool respirator up there, and that's the one thing you always saw too in some of the TIE fighter um, pilots, is it would have like a really done up breathing respirator for like the captain. Right. He was a little bit more identified. So I'm taking part of that visual reference I've seen before and trying to bring it a little bit more in the, in the design to add a teeny bit more to what you have. So I think, I mean, I think this is the stronger of the designs. Now, this is cool too. I like. I like these angles that are in here that you're playing on. I think that's fun. And I like the idea of this is maybe like a specialized ship that has this, you know, big turret system. In fact, you can take that idea and play off of it. You know, like what if you had, so, um, hold on a minute. Let me bring up a piece of reference for you. Because no one's really done this, right, when you, when you look at TIE Fighters, okay? If we go to Google here, let's... Um, it's the Thundercat that's what they call it uh airplane no it's not the Thundercat what's the one with the two big engines on the back and it's they call it a tank killer uh, oh is that uh, A10 yeah I think so it should come up right here yeah this is it that's what you need to do look at this beastie weaponry we have it's got two big jet engines in the back. It has a giant, like, 50-millimeter cannon on the front. And this thing is loaded with armament. This thing is not made to, fat, to fly fast. It comes in, and it eliminates a whole field of tanks and troops. That's all it's meant to do. And, um, I mean, imagine a TIE fighter where you have that center, but maybe in the back, and then it splits, and it's got two big engines, and it has massive amount of armament. This thing just flies in here, drops. See what I'm getting at? trying to take something that I've seen here and then add add a little bit more of that to the, the design and see if it will push me in another direction. Um, look at an A-10. See if we can find a couple other variations of it. I almost want to type in A-10 fully loaded. So imagine if you took something like this the A-10 Thunderbolt, and then blended that into your design somehow. So imagine if that has the round cockpit, which is typical, right? What if it has a wing that goes off, but then these sides are maybe on the side like this at an angle? And then it has like two big gen engines in the back, and there's a ton of armament under the wings. Imagine a special bomb unit just made for TIE fighters. That's could maybe could you gave me that idea by ha it has this large missile or laser system there right mm -hmm. what if you expand onto it and make it a little bit larger make it look like it has two engines in the back you know th this is a great shape here what if we pull that out a little bit add to it just trying to push your design a little bit more right. you know give you something to think about anyway good work it's a good position to be what you have here i think those are working well so just you know
just remember what we were talking about in terms of the drop ship and then um, without a doubt in terms of the mercenary I would definitely make that feel more uh, evil okay, okay. All right, thanks. sure my pleasure all right next is Bana yes. Bana what did you pick you can go ahead and tell us as I pull this up in Photoshop I'm sorry Santa Claus theme okay so this was a Santa Claus part of the assignment okay and Santa's workshop okay so large-scale present wrapper device was one this is oops I'm zooming in on the wrong window sorry guys hold on let me come back here okay so this is his control booth right I think that's great um, I think that's looking really nice. My only comment, hold on, let me get my ruler. And I know it's a rough today. I know we're looking at roughs. Just watch the, I already noticed the perspective on the keyboard's a little off, right? But that's a minor fix. Um, I, what I really like about this prop and the way it's working is, well, a couple of things. I, I really like the curve and these flows that you're putting in here, you know? Um, I think those look really, really nice, very attractive looking. Um, take off and put another layer here so we can draw on top actually let me see if I can just get rid of this little sorry I was going to get rid of that brush window but it doesn't appear to be moving let me see if I can do it like this aha put the brushes off and there now it's a little easier for us to zoom in yeah I I thought th this is cool I like that this actually reminds me of like a mini me chair. <laughs> you know who mini me is? He's this little, he's a, like a small, like a little dwarf guy. He was in a couple of the Austin Power movies. He was the bad guy. Oh. Or uh, yeah, anyway, um, anyway, to part of that. But doesn't that like you'd have a little character in here with this giant chair? It'd be funny to play up on that. But I really like this a lot. This looks like a cool Santa little control booth, you know. Um, I like this one down here. What do you guys think? I personally like the bottom one. Um, yeah. It looks a lot more uh, yeah. Christmassy. The exactly. In, in part of that, the first thing that I caught on to, let me go to red here so it's a little easier to see. First thing I caught on to were these nice swirls that you have going in here. Those swirls just pull you into that Christmassy theme. You know, they remind me of candy and candy canes, right? So I, I And it looks like a piece of furniture because expensive furniture has the nice you know swirls to it like that and then every then i like this controller i like the way the tv's in here you can put the speakers in there but on the tv monitor don't have it squared yeah don't you have all these nice curves in here get in here and find a way to maybe round it up a little bit or you know not necessarily like a semicircle, not like that but even if it has even if it's a square get in there and round the corners on it you know have it soft we don't want to have um what you're getting now is very hard edges on there and i had to get rid of those edges and then also i know this is going to be a pain in the butt to do from the angle that you're at okay hold on i hit some window and i got rid of all the layers and everything what did i do there um but also i would give this a thickness and make it look like it's a wood you know what i mean like almost like a wood overlay that comes down that adds more to that that Christmassy feel and then you know like we said about the keyboard I like the controls don't be afraid to push up the knob a little bit more have it pop out come a little bit higher you might even have another little knob here you can have one of those secret little red buttons that are like the emergency you know button or something that he hits but I really like that a lot I think that's looking really nice now remember Santa sitting in this you got to make that chair wider I like the bottom one better. I think that matches this design. But, excuse my French, but Santa's ass is not going to fit in that little seat, right? He's going to be sitting there, like each cheek's going to be hanging over like this. You know, his legs like this. You know what I mean? Which would be funny, but, you know, it's just, just make it wide. This is Santa's chair that he sits in. You know what I mean? And, and I would really echo part of that in the design, okay? All right, um, let's take a look right here. What we're we doing for here? Little, his little vehicle is going to drive around, right? Yeah, it, it's supposed to be a gold car. Okay. Yeah, that's what you put in the description. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, the perspectives are, yeah, it's a teeny bit off, but it, again, we're just in the idea phase. I, I like a couple of these. I mean, I think this one right here is, is a lot of fun, and I like this one right here. What do you guys think? I like the curve on the, uh, the bottom one. The yeah. Front, but the, uh, the back of it, I don't think is working. Yeah, again, Santa's going to be this wide guy in and out, right, yeah. of it, so you need to have that that idea in there um, that he could fit in there. So it might even be custom, might even be a little bit wider in there. And what I would recommend is I would just, I, this is Santa's vehicle, right? He might have like a, you know, I don't know. I, he might have like some cool horn on the side. He might have little candy canes that come out, right? He might have Christmas lights that light up here around the top of it, you know? Freaking Santa Claus is driving around this thing. It's gotta be awesome. I mean, he might even have a, you know, heck, even with if you think about it, Santa's heavy, right? What if he has dual wheels in the back? Yeah. You know, because he's a heavy set guy, right? He gets a little bit much wider seat in here. Maybe this just bows out to hold him in. Maybe there's a couple of funny, you know, maybe he's got little, little uh, rear view mirrors that are hanging off the side. You know, he might have a little, um, right here in the middle, there might be a couple horns or something, you know. Um, if this has how that wheel comes imagine if you put a little bit of a fender there and then he has like a candy cane hanging off of each fender type of thing you know what i mean i would find a way to punch it up just a little bit more it is santa's and it is a golf cart and you're doing it very well i like this idea right here the little lights you see it has like these lights in the front that are candlelit there's so many different directions you could go but if this is santa's golf cart we want to be able to look at that thing and make sure it rains santa okay so uh, and I think this is cute too. I like that idea of, you know, maybe he's got this wide door here that opens up and he gets in there and make the seat a little bit wider. You know, and you can have a lot of fun with this. He could have this, you know, this little steering column and you have this huge steering wheel up here and he just sits in this little thing. And he, you know what I mean? Drives around and puts around in part of the um, his world, you know? That would be really cool to take the props you're doing and the characters put them in a world with an environment and tell a little story with it. Santa driving with his little cart coming up to like this huge, you know, packaging wrapping device that's preparing things. So there's, a, I think there's a lot you can do with these. Um, this, and eh, that feels a little Asian theme because of the arches in there and it, and it looks a little more like a carriage. That's why I sort of ixnayed on that design. And, and this one was okay too, but then it's too straight back. And it feels like some weird golfing golf cart, you know. I think, without a doubt, these two are your best designs. And I take one of those and work with them. I mean, this there's a lot of things I like about this. I just think if you could add a couple little... What's funny is that there's a point... I know you might not get this reference because of your background, right? But there's another movie called Willow, Willy Wonka, Chocolate Factory, right? Where everything was overdone. When I think of Santa, I think of everything being sort of that Willy Wonka theme. Yeah, the movie where like they had like these you know horns and weird devices and stuff like that. Um, I think you could add a little bit more to get these more Christmassy. Okay. All right. Okay, and then let's jump over here. Uh, excuse me, we did that one. We did that one. So this was the one we wanted. So this is your gift wrapping device, right? So one thing that's going to be helpful. I know it's not on here. We want to see scale. Okay, because it's going to, scale's important. So when I look at like this right now, I'm imagining somebody here about yay tall versus imagine this device here and somebody's like that tall. See the scale of it? It looks huge. So you got to have to really be careful because when I look at this device and I see a couple controls in the wrapping paper, I'm estimating somebody about that height right there. And then it makes it look really small. So, um, Part of that design on Santa's workshop, right, was it's a large scale present wrapping device, okay? Must take presents in bear and then it wraps them and spits them out in the finish end. Okay, so because of that, you're touching on something on here that I think that works is the conveyor belt. There's a huge conveyor belt with presents being dumped and transferring to it, then it's wrapping and spitting them out. So I like the idea of, and I think you're onto this, you know, but you could, you could also change 
part of the adjustment. Give me a second here. Let me go back a couple steps here on the add another layer and take this lock off really fast. Oops. So I like the idea instead of the conveyor belt on the same level like this is it what if you have a conveyor belt that's like this that might be a little bit lower and then you have this huge device and then the conveyor belt is higher and it's spitting out all these presents that are wrapped and maybe then it gets dropped off and there's like a big bin and then they're picking up the bin after it gets filled with all the presents that are wrapped you know what i mean so thinking of it being on multiple levels was my sort of my first idea because you know, we mentioned that before in the environment sketching class anytime you have something on different levels it looks a lot more interesting so what's really cool though is hold on a minute let's do this is you have parts here that you can combine and turn into a big giant wrapping machine so i'm going to do that really quick let me see if i can do this Super fast. Let's take this right here. Um, what happened to my window? Where did my tools go? I don't know. I hit some hotkey and everything like disappeared. Okay. So let's take this and um, let me switch to white real quick. Edit. And let's fill. Sorry that I had another layer up there and I didn't. My bad. There we go. Edit. Fill this layer. Okay, foreground color. Okay, now let's come here. I want to take this guy right here. Copy him. Put him right there. Let's come back then to here and copy that guy. And erase some of this overspray around him a little bit here. So what I'm getting at here is I'm trying to imagine if this part was up on top here somehow. Give me a second here. It'd be easier. I don't have the layers like you do. You could probably go in and take the layers out. I got to erase around all this. But now imagine this lower part being much larger. And hold on a minute, let's come back here. Let's turn that off. And what if we took like this, you have this cool little, even that's pretty cool there too. That little gear and gizmo, copy. Trying to see if maybe that could be like part of the front area. So what I'm going to do, I do this all the time with spaceships and other stuff, is I'm just taking part of your design that you already have and I'm trying to blend it together to see what I can come up with. If I can come up with a different type of design or different feel. That's cool. And then the last thing I wanted to do is I really like this tower that you had in here. Oops, I'm sorry, I'm clicking the wrong layer. It's all in the same. What if I take this guy here? Copied it and something happened, it didn't show. Let's go back here. Okay.
So you have the layers with the individual drawings on it. It's going to be a little bit easier. See what I did here? I'm just trying to push your silhouette shapes. Right there, that looks like a much better contraption. Just combining your shapes. And I thought this would be cool because look. First off, look at the scale. So you imagine an elf being about yay high, being tall. Maybe Santa's scale is like, you know, maybe Santa's about here and his elves are shorter. So maybe this conveyor belt, something helps get it up there and then the package comes out here and it gets lower. So decide which one's going to be in, which one, and maybe, maybe it spits out here like out. That'd be funny. It's a, a total angle level. It's different. But look at all this silhouette here. All that combined, that makes it look like a giant machine that's just like, you know, parts moving, gears spinning. It's bringing something in, it's spitting it out. That's the direction I would take on it. Combine what you have and go on that path. Okay? Because that to me is a lot more powerful. And if I come back and just look at, those are like little separate devices that feel smaller in scale. Go larger. Okay? And have fun with it. Okay. Thank you, Bana. Good work. Nice sketches. Okay, all right, let's jump in. Let's see who's next here. So David, let's take a look at yours. All right, Dave, tell us what you're going for here. Well, it says on there, going for the Robotech roughs. Oh, did you step out? Okay, Dave, step out real quick. We'll come right back to Dave's then. I think he went to the restroom. Let's go back here. Who's Eddie Vetter? That would be me. That was just a joke. Okay, gotcha, Eddie. The knucklehead. Okay. All right. Before you say anything, well, you guys can tell by looking at that. What is he going for? Okay, because you see the joy in the back. I want to make sure someone can nail the difference between Star Wars or the Robotech part of the assignment, right? Okay. Huh? Tinkerbell. Tinkerbell's. Yeah. Okay, so um, Anthony, what's that site you had up earlier that had all the, the ships on it for Star Wars? I saw one of you guys up over there earlier had it. It had a bunch of ships in there. Uh, yeah, I thought you had a site. And Anyway, I, I looked on... on uh, Somebody's computer screen was up, and they had um, a bunch of, like, they had a whole reference site on all the different ships for TIE fighters. And oh, there was a, a TIE fighter chart. I just looked there's a TIE fighter chart? Okay. Yeah, and there's also, I know, like an alliance chart, you know. Um, so my, my comment when I, when I look at this, right, I like this. To me, this is a different ship back here. I like that ship much better than I like that ship right there. Okay. Um, this doesn't, this... Something is happening here. What do you guys think? What are your thoughts? Something's happening here in the canopy that doesn't make it feel... It feels like a drop ship. It doesn't feel like a TIE fighter to me. And there is much more design sensibilities happening in that drawing than there is in this drawing. In this drawing, the wing's like, uh, uh, right? This, you had a cool angle taking place in there. Uh, your angle's been lost a little bit more in here. Um, there is much more of a slant right here and a sleekness. This is much more blunt. See what I'm getting at? The shade? There's a lot more that was happening here that I think was working that took me into that area of being a fighter. Now, the one thing I do like about this is I like how the engines are raised up a little bit more and the wings are a little bit lower. But um, this feels too, like, truncated. You know what I mean? It feels sort of just like squashed together. And I, without a doubt, there's something happening here in the front end of this that's just, that's like, that's like the cab of a crane. You know, a guy that operates the crane? That looks like the, the cockpit of a crane operator. That doesn't look like the cockpit of somebody in a starfighter, right? In Star Wars. It doesn't look like an X-Wing cockpit. I mean, when you look at look at Luke's cockpit in the traditional X-Wing, see how long gated it was? It felt like a, it was stretched and long. It had that feeling of like a jet. 
That's what jets look like. This is much more compact. I'd find a way to get in there, and maybe integrate part of this to the body somehow. In fact, just looking at that, it immediately gave me this idea of this feels like a whole separate piece, the back part of the body, then does the front tied into it. And part of it's because this goes here and then ends and drops, and there's a definite, this is a different piece than the body is. What I would recommend to do is when I think of having um, a solid fighter, okay, a Rebel fighter, whether it be X-Wing or whatever, I'm thinking something that's sleek and long. So I'd find a way to maybe tie some of this here. Look at this body. That body felt part of this body. See that straight movement going back? Here it's like, eh, eh, eh. And it's like different, you know what I mean? I would get the sleekness you have in here. And actually what I, what I really liked about this design that you had there is how that came back so sleek how this runs back, but then after you get that sleekness and that speed feel that's coming in there, what if what if this wing arches back a little bit and then maybe sort of comes forward a little like that? You know what I mean? See how much more fast that feels? It feels wicked fast compared to... Then you can add in, you know, there might be an area back in there, maybe that raises a little bit and there's a midsection maybe there's a little shield and then you have the droid so does you know what i mean maybe this slopes back a little bit and then th maybe that curves out a little bit more like so then you get the engine that's in there look at that that's totally changed the sensibilities of that design just a couple angles but this right here what you're having now eh, eh, that's a like a milk delivery vehicle or something right <laughs> i'm not trying to bash it but the shapes aren't there for that. It's a, it's an X-wing fighter. <laughs> Sound effects, right? That thing just, you know, this thing is like coming over and bringing Napa Auto Parts to me or something. You know what I mean? So push that up a little bit. Also, I mean, without a doubt, everything I said here is applying. But I mean, look at what's happening. I think this design you have over here is a much better design. You could just go in there, change a couple angles on there. You know, what if this what if this front wing came back in and tied into the rear wing? Like that. See how I just put that little line in there? Sorry, I didn't draw on a separate layer, but what if this came in, and then it ties in, you have the engine in here, maybe a little part comes off and then goes back this way. See that? Now you have this really cool silhouette shape that's really working in that design with that front cockpit. This design you did here, Mr. Vetter, definitely looks like an X-Wing cockpit. It's much sleeker, you know. Um, I still like the idea because of the original X-Wing fighters, how the wings would move and separate. Um, if you incorporate something that dealt with like a Tomcat, you know what an F-14 Tomcat is? Yeah. So F-14 Tomcat plane, the wings, you know, Top Gun, right? They open up when it's in close the wings are fully open when it's doing a bunch of maneuvers, and when that plane has to fly fast, the wings close. You could tie something into this somehow. But you are I think you're on something that's looking really cool here. And I saw that design last week from you, and I liked it. But now when you got to this, it sort of got squared off too much, you know? Go back to this right here, okay? I think that's awesome. Um, that's your... Is that like the captain's version? Yeah. I still think you're a little squared up in some of this. I know that's a armament of missiles, but I think you could break some of that square shape. And if if here's the catch, if this is a captain's vehicle, it's going to be more stylized than this guy right here. So, I mean, this is like a private ship, right? So whatever the private vehicle ends up doing, to me, this is more your captain's vehicle right there. It's a lot more stylized, a lot sleeker. So I would think of it like this to give the metaphor or analogy to cars, okay? The captain's ship is like the Porsche, okay? And the, the private ship is like the, the Volkswagen. You know what I mean? 
I mean, that's how you have to think of it. So that to me, this is a Porsche right here in the back there. That feels more like the captain's vehicle. So if you go back to this, um, that's starting to look more like a bomber because you have all, I mean, that's like an assault vehicle. I don't know if that's necessarily captains. So if you're going for assault, make that the private, then maybe that's an assault vehicle for private and you could call it that, you know, because look at that. You got two big loaded cannons of missiles on the front, um, you know, but I would, and I like this, this silhouette here, the side view here to me is stronger than what's part of what's going on in here. Here, it doesn't, I like how this carves up like this right in here. Okay. I don't see that happening here. It's missing in part of that design and that transfer. Okay. And the other thing that's killing you in part of your roughs here is your line is so thick. It's so rough. It's flattening out part of the drawing. You can have a rough drawing, but you've got to get that line down a little bit thinner so we can see what's happening. Um, to me, that was a lot thinner in the back here, even if you scale it down, but you got to be careful of like areas like this. It gets super rough here. We're not quite getting the perspective. Some of that's pulling down from what you have. Okay. So you're on a good start. Examine the difference between captains and private. Okay. Let's look at your convoy. I don't know if I'm getting a convoy feel out of that. When I think a convoy, I think is something that has storage capacity. It's a convoy, it carries a lot. I think the thing that's killing this for me is the size of this window right here. That feels like a one or two person flying ship. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I need something else on it that indicates scale. So what are your guys' thoughts? Does that feel convoy? Yes. Maybe if we reveal that in the back of the cylinder figure back there, that there's a drop hatch and shoots come out. That's actually what it is. Okay. Yeah, but, but, but the windshield, that. but the cockpit is, is, is dictating size, scale. Is dictating scale. Yeah. So that's, that's right. like a one speeder kind of a That's the read I got off of it. When I looked at that cockpit, it felt like there was one dude sitting in here like this, you know, driving that thing around. So. And, and that's what's dictating scale. I think if you get in here and you find a way to um, I was trying to think if you find a way to have like a smaller type of cockpit, maybe a couple windows that feel like they're going across, you know, and minimize some of that and make it, then you have this large ship shape and then it looks like there's room for smaller people in there. And then it looks like it can carry 20 to 50 guys in the back type of thing. You know what I'm getting at? Yeah. Right now, the perspective isn't giving me that. Right now, the perspective is giving me this is one local driving a speeder across the desert, right? So you need to get that scale in there that identifies it. You know what? What's funny is some of Anthony and I see Yami back there shaking their heads. We had an assignment like this where they had to build an assignment like this in 3D. And the one thing that sets out the vehicle when you build it in 3D in Maya is the scale. Once you put something in there that I, because I showed them a vehicle and made a large door on it, the large door makes the vehicle look like crap. So the small door makes it look big. So there's other items in there you could set for scale. And in this particular design, you could also think about maybe drawing a side view indicating where the troops come out. Okay, because I'm, I'm getting what you're going for, but this is just too large right there. That's like a one person cockpit, you know, in there. And again, the rough. Look at how thick those lines are. We have Sketchbook Pro, and we have this pen. I gave out this pen I'm drawing with right now. Look at how nice and soft those lines are. Okay? I mean, and I'm not, I don't even know if I have the pressure sensitivity. I can press down. I can get thin, thick, thin, thick. You want to have that show in your drawing. Um, when you don't have that in your rough, it makes it feel very like, oh. My name Gorilla, me draw a prop, right? It just feels too heavy. I tone that down a little bit. Get Even though it's a rough, get that, you know, this is just way too thick in there, okay? Get that identified in there. So work on the scale on this guy, and I think that'll help you out quite a bit, okay? Other than that, good stuff. A couple little adjustments. That's why we do these little crit reviews. Yeah, I like that one there. Just adding a couple other things, having a variation to it. All right, David, let's look at yours. You're doing Robotech. Um, I think these are awesome. I think they're spot on. These are, are in the same family for for that series. 
And I think these are great. Um, I mean, that I really like that guy right there a lot. It's it's like a a, a prong. It's, that looks like some type of a evil organism that latches onto your body, right, and injects you. Yeah, that's great. Of course, it was the last one, right? Multiple pages of design, right, Eddie? Multiple designs, not one or two or three. See, we're back on that sort of the same topic. I think that's what killed you, Eddie, on part of your work is you ended up with one large design, and I'm not getting the thumbnail and coming across in the design phase. Okay, and that's, you know, look, this one up here, a little boring. That's getting there. But see, that's the, Eddie, that's the process. And we've talked about this in character design too. That's part of the process that's happening. If you're not doing numerous thumbnails and designs and you're just doing one or two, it's going to be really hard to nail that. You need to give your time, your, your mind and your brain time to think and look at, I mean, look at how this evolved. This started to turn into something right here. I bet you, I mean, I could just read this like a book and tell Dave and say that after he did this one, he's like, hey, I'm getting close to something. And then he kept going and then he ended up something like here or here with the legs. And then he got this thing, which is a combination of these legs with these spikes. And that's exactly what he did is he merged two or three other designs together and ended up with that guy. And that guy's, a, that guy's the winner. Any other thoughts on that? Uh huh. Absolutely, that's a great design right there. That looks like a a, a state like a drop. It looks like something you could drop out of a plane or a ship that comes down, latches itself into the ground, and is like this full armament air anti aircraft missile battery system. You know what I mean? That maybe even has machine guns or who knows what. I mean, those look like they could tear up a town. They could tear up a whole line of incoming tanks or planes. That's what's really awesome. Speaking of that, did you guys hear what happened in the news today? Uh, a Russian fighter was flying close to Turkey, and they just took it down. The anti-aircraft system just launched missiles at it and just blew it out of the sky. You know, so, And then Putin's all, I feel like I've been betrayed and stopped in the back. It's like, why are you flying your planes by another country, dude? Keep them away from other people's country. Anyway. Um, yeah, that looks like something Turkey had this morning, you know. So that's awesome. Very nicely done. Okay. Um, these are great. Again, nice variation. Some good, you know, really fun shapes in here. Especially how you're going from like, um, I really like this, how you have these lines and you get a nice big curve in here. Look, you have that shape, another large shape. Good contrast against each other. Um, and this is without a doubt right up in there. They always have that like, look like a shrimp prong, yeah, right? Those, those, those alien ships just look so weird. That, yeah, like, but it, so they made... Like too, yeah, like, they look like a crustaceous growth. Yeah. A, a, a mixture of a crab meets okay. a shrimp. Crustaceous growth in the ocean. That's what their, their ships always look like. And I, I think you've really nailed that right there in that design with, with what you have in there. And same thing even here that's like... This is like the giant ship. That's like support ship. That would be even be a, a drop ship or tram. I think those are all great. They're working very nice. Yeah, the middle and the bottom are yeah I think those are great. Again, uh, I think those are working really well. Um, uh, I like that. That's your, what do you call that? Uh, the, the Veritex. Veritex, yeah. It's the ones that transform, but I, right now they don't really have that kind of feel that like, they can transform. So I want to um, go back and add. Back. Absolutely, and I think that's easy to do. You can get in here and have that add some parts. You can break up some of the body here and have that like a separate piece. You can look like there's a part here that connects this to this. You get, a, you know, engines in there or whatever and make it look like there's separate segments that rotate or twist. But even outside of that, um, I think that that is a beautiful design right there. That's the last one. <laughs> yeah, is it? So, uh, note, having to, to go over this, what... You guys see me do this in the crit wall all the time. What do I tend to always choose at? I always tend to choose and pick your last design because you do a bunch of thumbnails. You're, it's just that simple. It's the same thing with me when I do environments or anything else. Your last design is the better. It's the best design. Incorporates lots of features. That's why doing pages of thumbnails, coming up, finishing your ideas. You know what's so great about the ship? You know what it makes it feel, why it feels fast? 
is this. Oh, yeah. It's like a like air going over a Lamborghini, right? I mean, that's awesome. That's a great design theory and premise to have those curves in there, that little wing that's tilted at an angle like this. The fact this ship, not only does it curve, but there's a flow in the body that brings these out. The wings come out. That flow comes back in there. Actually, there's a couple of, um, let me see if not to go off topic here, but if I, if you were to look at Chinese, um, uh, yeah. MIG fighters, they do the same thing. They have some really wicked curves in them. Look at that thing. See that whole cockpit up there? It like really pronounces itself out. And then look at under the plane, how it curves down to this jet engine and then it has this on the side. They have some really wicked. The Russian MIG is actually the, is more of a pronounced. Does it really? Curve. I even saw a. Uh, I saw some documentary about the Chinese and the Russians working together, and they had like future MIG fighting planes. Dude, they were so badass looking. Let's go back to images here. Um, is that the? I think this might be the Russian. Yeah, huge. And look at that wing coming out the side. Another wing there. I mean, they look like little attack sharks. You know. God, they have that way of incorporating that into their design. It's just absolutely I'm so glad I'm not a fighter pilot, right? Imagine flying a, like a little F-16 and you saw that thing coming for you. Look at that beast. Are there shapes for the Russian uh, are a lot more rounder? They have a lot of curves. And I started taking that and the, the British um, fighter jet and kind of tried to mix them up a little bit. Absolutely, and you can see that. You can see that you gathered reference, looked at it, and drew. And some of you guys aren't doing that. If you're, I can tell you this now, everyone look up. If you're drawing from your head and you're just throwing down shapes, there's like a 50 to 70% odd you're not gonna succeed because you can't just do that out of your mind unless you've been studying military planes and, and designs and stuff like that for a long time. And I, I, I'm one of those kids that I grew up making little Japanese Tamiya models, right? And, and always looking at weaponry, going to air shows, always amazed at the curves. And I remember the first time I saw a Cobra helicopter sitting on a tarmac with fully loaded with guns and missiles in an air show, I almost crapped my pants. I mean, I did. I was like so excited in the curves and all that. And I actually remember I had this uh, Swedish exchange student. She's like, you Americans love war and weaponry so much. And I'm like, dude, because it's awesome. Someone designed that. Look at how wicked that thing looks, you know. But anyway, I know that's probably bad to say, but not that we're pro-war or anything. We're not. We just find countries and go bomb them. But that's a whole different story, right? Um, there's a great feel that's happening in there that's really working. And I think you've been very successful with your design. So excellent job. Okay, very nicely done. All right, it's going to be fantastic. It's going to be great portfolio pieces for you. Really nice, David. Great way to bring everything to a finished, you know, subject there great way to, to bring it to a good you know it's just solid designing going from a thumbnails into like a good rough there okay all right jose what are we looking at here sir i sent a workshop all right so let's start and i don't mean to be um i hope i'm not being too harsh on any of these reviews so this guy needs more work yeah, so what I would, like I talked about with Bana, design a couple parts and montage them all together. That'll help you think outside of the box. I think the big problem here is this, is the symmetry, is it's e it's equal on all sides. It's just split down the middle. Um, I think you're getting onto something right here and here. I would bet money that this is probably, is that one of your last sketches? Yeah, that was the last one. Yeah, you could tell, because look, look at how the silhouette's changing. You know, look at that. Here, you're like, okay, one arm, you know. Yeah. And then here, you're like, oh, no, conveyor belts. That's awesome, right? But here, you're starting to get, okay, in, out. But look at the problem is that, you know, yeah. it's going to wrap it, do all these things. It's so small in there. So what I would suggest is, and the other thing, too, is remember, what's the one thing when we looked at Banna's work earlier that really got us to look at the Santa stuff? Remember the flowing curves? And you think of candy canes? If I was designing this, 
I would think of having this conveyor belt be on a curve like so. To me, that would be really cool and match part of like a candy cane is that this goes in here sideways. Then when we go in here, we have this giant big freaking system that's like taking it. Maybe it gets up here and it's like spraying it. It gets wrapped. It comes down here and then it gets spit out and then it comes out of another conveyor belt. Make that feel like it is a giant little factory. This is like, that's an airport scanner. That's in and out, right? You know what I mean? Add a little bit more. Get out of just the box. Think of this big, that's a great thing. It's, it's, this is, you're going into a different stylized series. It's not Robotech, right? So you, you can get to this Santa's wrapper and make it like this big giant enormous machine with think of crossing steampunk into Santa it could have gears you can see gears moving there might be a see-through part of it like a, you know have you ever seen a big x-ray machine that people get x-rayed on so like the present goes through it's getting prepped something's picking it up and then there's an automatic wrapper we don't have to see all of that but you can have even a part of it be see-through and that's going to do a lot more to push the design okay uh, as far as this goes um, so you're now I, let's start with the golf cart I think this is really cool and on the right direction right there I think that's your stronger design however though um, it's starting to feel like you got like hanging dice there yeah. right so um, maybe instead of a hanging dice he has a, like a bobblehead of Rudolph or something you know what I mean I would tie it in this feels like when I go down to the river the Colorado River, that feels like my neighbor's golf cart that's across the way. So you need to Christmatize that golf cart okay. and make it a little bit more Christmas eyes. So, you know, what if you have, you know, a rounded top up here that comes up and there's like a, a an elf's head or something on there. You know what I mean? You know, that ties in. What if there's, what if it's not, okay, maybe it's not that. Maybe there's you know, a couple of big horns up here and a couple candy canes. You know what you need to do is go look at the Christmas decorations. And here's, there's a, a, by my house, there's a little city that has like a lake and everyone has a little boat on it. And people go by the blow up Christmas decorations and they put it on top of the boat. And that's what would make Santa's boat. So imagine if you had like a, a snowman up here holding a candy cane. That's how we Christmatize it. You know, bring it in. What if you had this cool horn here, some other horn here, and on the front here, there's something else Christmas oriented. You know what I mean? This is Santa's personal cart, right? Bring it to him. Make it feel like it's his. You know what I mean? Yeah, it just is. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then here, what, what were you going for there? For what? The desk? Yeah. Well, I just pictured him like a style-wise. I just wanted it to be... Because it's a control station yeah. you're supposed to do. This feels more like Santa's desk where he's looking and doing billing and add, adding up, you know, you know, estimates and stuff like that. I would, so that doesn't quite feel to me like um, a control station. I, re, I put in the, I'm reading the blog right now as I'm looking at this Santa control station equipped with amazing Santa chair, computer, and micro monitors. Uh, for Santa to assist and oversee the production of Christmas presents. That feels more like a personal business desk. I would possess that a little bit more. Maybe have multiple monitors. We want him to be able to think of it as he's the manager of a whole entire factory. He's going to sit down and be able to oversee everything. That's how I would push that part of that design. Okay. All right. Cool. Other than that, good drawings, man. They look good. Uh, Eddie, see what I'm talking about the line quality here? See how thin the line is? got to get your line down thin like that. It, that way it doesn't compete. You can still be rough. You have really nice rough drawings, but your line's too thick. Get your line down to this type of thickness, like here, like what you see here and here, and it's going to work a lot easier. Okay? All right, good job, Jose. Just a couple little adjustments there. All right, next. Let's take a look here. Jordan. All right. PSDs here. All right, one second. We're loading up. Okay. 
so here's some silhouettes that you did, some little side views. Okay, tell us what you're going for here. Uh, Macross. Macross. Okay, uh, Macross Robotech influenced design sensibilities. Okay, and then we have here Ship One. Tell us about the ship. Then we'll come back here and take a look at that guy. Well, it's supposed to be the ship that heroes have used to try to use a lot of curves. Okay. Um, I like, so quick review on this. I like the front. I like the design that's happening here. That matches that style. Uh, major issue with perspective in the wings. Yeah. You see that? It's going this way. When, if we draw a line going across here, the rest of your body is sort of going in this direction like so. See that? So that's massively off right there. You got to get that wing fixed. So I, I think, in I mean, and then look, even your perspective here, it's like all of a sudden in the back, there's this huge distortion. You've been battling perspective quite a bit this semester. You need to get an accurate grid, zoom into the grid like that technique that I showed you and be drawing on top of it because you're getting, look at this, and then even the top of this wing hits that. See, it's like, almost like the points are too close there's too many things that are off there and that's going to hurt your design because you can have a really nice design which i'm going to pretend the wings right here if i block out this and this i like the direction you're going into and it feels like that area like that's happening but then you know some of it gets a little gets too washed out here in the back and the perspective gets thrown off the other thing too is uh jordan just watch the center line if you throw a center line down this vehicle like that's pretty accurate there but um, there's a huge hump right there right they're smoothed over on their vehicles they're not going to have that's a 90 degree angle right here where that ju jumps up they're not going to have that in their design the th everything's going to be smooth and rounded and you can see some of that so i would watch that that's not quite mimicking part of what they have okay so you're on the right path but you got to fix the wings that's throwing you off as far as this goes right here i think that's looking really good now this is a um oh, i'm sorry it's the attack droid. okay this is a tac droid i'm getting that attack feel from it i think it's on the right path again um there are some perspective issues happening in there you need to watch you know just be careful because look you have the lines going this way which and then look at the feet so the feet are going this way and then when I get to the back, you have this happening. See that? So you have some weird contortions there, again, happening in the perspective. You have to get that nailed down and get these things looking right, or else it's not going to look right. Now, outside of the perspective being off, I think the shape language and the design sensibilities that you have in there, I think they're working very nice. I think you could pull that together and have a really strong piece. Um, just go back, take a look at some reference, get it to blend together. You know, be careful of this you know to me it feels like this is way too thin it feels like this should be maybe a little bit thicker connecting in here somehow feeling more tangible okay so go back make sure your reference the feet are feeling good um and stuff but just don't overkill it you know and i'm also noticing even here like on your ellipses okay you're not drawing through you're just doing this that's not an ellipse and ellipse it's going to be like that if we draw through it we're going to get that round feel so you're taking some liberties there on that too. So if you're going to go, you're really close in the design sensibilities, but you have to tighten up the drawing and get the perspective to work in there, okay? Other than that, I think the design sketches are good. All right, cool. Nicely done. Okay. All right, let's see who's next. And Kylie. Oh, I put a Kylie folder. Mary's not here. Paul sent me something else Sarah Sarah tell us about what you're working on here okay all right um All right, let's start with this guy. I think you're on the right path. I think this is working as a control station. I think you can make that chair and that desk a little bit more elaborate as Santa's, you know, look up like, imagine an, a carpenter. When I think of Santa's chair, I think of something that a carpenter made for him. 
that's round and you know has this big pluff and plush inviting seating in it i would push some of that design sensibility in there i like the idea of the christmas lights being on there um what i would do is i would recommend maybe we don't we don't even necessarily have to see the computer there it could just be like this large control station that he sits at with multiple monitors and it's implied that it's the computer is built in to the center in fact what I almost wanted to do is come in here and just draw a line on top of this. Imagine if this was all like one piece here that housed all this, right? See that? How it makes it more like a, a whole control station instead of a couple monitors on a desk. Make it feel like it's one entitled, you know, push it. Imagine the head of the CIA sitting at a control station what would that look like santa's got a monitor production he's got flights he's got to monitor weather right think of it like that imagine a control you might want to reference um a um airport control station you know where they're up there and they're looking at all these different radar systems and so on uh radar monitors monitoring the weather all that type of stuff maybe even even as a printer printing out reports on weather conditions around the world type of thing that's the direction i would take that into um on this i think you're on the right track however again this oops this feels very uh it feels small because the character's height is about there and it feels like a presence gonna go this actually to be honest like i mentioned before to somebody else it feels like an x-ray booth it feels like what i see at the airport i like your idea of putting the paper on here Play with that. So imagine, like, have you ever seen big printing presses? They have all these paper. So maybe there's like a round spindle here. There's another ream of paper here. Maybe there's another ream of paper here. And it like changes the paper. But this here, this base, this body, is sort of like mm -mm, over. To me, this would be this huge operating system with this green. You know, there might be a little pipe coming out of here, a little smoke coming. There might be light bulbs that light up. You might see part of inside here. You could do a lot more, and I would try to get the scale down to about there. So maybe you see the belt come out like this, and here's the door to the belt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Really make that much more exaggerated. Um, go look at Polar Express. Remember that big machine in Polar Express they had? It would gather all the presents and stuff. That's how much you want to push this. Step further. Uh, I'd, I'd love the, the little reindeer coming off the top there. I think that's great. Uh, I think that's working. But again, Santa, customized, right? Big found rat, round jolly guy, round cushy chair. Um, I'd make maybe the wheels a little bit, the tire a little bit thicker for him. Um, I like the red nose on the front, but I think you can, you know, might have a cool horn or two. You know, I just would push it a little bit more. Take that design go with it, round it up a little bit more. I actually sort of like the front of that design a little bit too. Yeah. We want to look at that know it's Santa's car. Decorations, all that good stuff, okay? You're on your way. Those are good good little uh, thumbnails and sketches that are taking you there. Okay, you're almost there. Do another pass. My pleasure. Okay, let's go ahead. Let's see who's next here. And so that was Sarah Tito, the Destroyer. Okay, um, is that, I got the email from you, right? Yeah. So maybe I didn't grab it, so give me a second there. I'll pause the recorder and I'll go back and get no, it. I, um, put the third file on the, there it is. Oh, there That's it is? Email. Okay. All right, you're going for Tinkerbell. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely not Star Wars, huh? <laughs> yeah. Okay. So that's our fairy, dunsing, fairy dispensing vehicle part for the Tinkerbell, Tinkerbell series. I can't talk. Um, I, I like how this is coming out in the front. I like the cockpit area where someone would be driving that. You do need some controls. You need. I'd have a steering wheel that pops out a little bit more. There might be a little gear shift or something that looks like they can control it and drive the vehicle. However, this part right here, this looks so small. 
Looks like a little pill capsule. That's the that's the part that's the fair. It's a fairy dust dispenser. Make it look like it's much larger. It's maybe mixing up fairy dust. It's going to dispense it out. I like how it's dispensed going to be dispensed out through the flowers, right? But I think you can add more of a contraption device to the back of this. The big thing that's happening to me right now is the shape language in here. This little shape is secondary to the shape of this and all this. So do we want that bigger? Yes. You want that, the body, you want to be bigger and larger. You want that, we want to look at it and be like all, oh, damn, that's Tinkerbell's fairy dispensing trap. You know what I mean? Yeah. We want it to have that huge feel right now. This area back here is so much smaller compared to what the rest of the vehicle is. It's losing its shape, which means it's losing its visual read. Okay. All right. Um, on this right here, what was this prop here you're working on? That's the Floating balloon cart, right? Yeah. Um, this is a tough one. There's lots of attention going to the balloons when I don't think there has to be. Okay. It could just be a base balloon covered by some type of a net that's been made, right? You know what I mean? It could have like, you can have like a cool odd shaped balloon that feels like there's like rope net netting going over the top of it. And what I would do is I would really push up the shape of what that balloon card is and what's going to be in there. So it's the idea of like multiple. Yeah, well this starts to feel like a cactus. The green like that. I was thinking lily pad, but yeah. Yeah, I didn't get lily pad out of there. What did you guys get? I saw cactus as well. I got cactus as well. Yeah. First thing I saw was cactus. And then it made me feel like, Tinkerbell cactuses? Does she make a tequila? Or what is she? You know what I mean? All right? Yeah. Tink Tinkerbell's all hammered. I'm going to make some fairy dust for you guys right now. Right? I'm flying around in my cactus flyer. No, right? So I go back to the balloon. Ditch that. I would ditch that idea there, okay? Just keep one, right? I mean, I like this. Some type of leaves or something. Big fan blade in the back. That could work a little bit easier. I think you're getting too much information into the balloon part. The balloon's just, to me, basic, simple. It's the body of this that needs to feel cool. Like, she can fly around. So when I see this, I don't even see the mechanism to fly. Versus here, you have a little fan blade. It can be made out of little wood. It can be made out of pieces of blades of a tree, whatever. Okay, um, you can in incorporate something so it looks like she's flying around. I like that idea a lot better. Don't do the strawberry or flower thing too much, maybe. This could be just a large balloon, and it could even have, like, little flower leaves that are keeping it together. It could have a large green leaf that wraps over. I had issues of trying to think of what it would be made out of. I know, that's the hard part with Tinkerbell. But have you watched any of the movies? Yeah. You have? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm just making sure. Go back and look at some of the reference. See how they built other things. Yeah. Try to carry that over. Okay. That it, if it doesn't necessarily have to be made out of anything if you simplify it. I, I don't want to steal their idea though. You know, like. Well, you could take it, borrow it, and change it. Stealing. Not stealing. You could borrow exactly. I like that. I am going to repurpose you. Yeah. Need to. That's the, the simplification I'm talking about is just the net. The balloon is, is important. It's just there as a supporting element. The cart with the blade and how to drive it, maybe lights on it. You know, maybe she has a little jar of, of fireflies to light up the way. That's the stuff that's going to make it pop and work to me. Okay. okay. All right, cool. And this guy right here. This is your bread maker? Um, you could take it that way. I was more thinking of like some, um, or fi uh, I'm sorry, this looks like an ass spanker. <laughs> like you, you, you stand here and you'd bend over and you'd put your ass here and your head would be here and someone cranks his handle, this thing comes around and smacks your butt, right? Not an ass, we don't want an ass smacker. <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't know if my mind's in the gutter or what, but <laughs> it's just, so he had two options, right? A bread maker or fairy dust grinder processor. I don't see grinder and processor happening in there. Fairy dust extractor. And I don't see the bread maker. Okay. That's like, it's an ass smacker, I'm telling you. 
crank the handle and a gear goes around and the spoon comes around and smacks you. Look at bread makers. Look at, you know what I mean? Yeah, but they're just like the box. I know, but it's what happens in the box. There's a tray that goes in there. It, you, it takes the water and it grind and it takes the bread and it stirs it up and makes it into a dough and then it, it does the whole process. You gotta, that's your job as the designer to bring it up. And if it's not gonna be a bread maker, go back to the fairy dust grinder processor. Nothing about that feels like it's, it's grinding or processing. Mm -hmm. You need to add other elements and go beyond that. Uh, if anything, you can do uh, two views of the object, like something that's open, that and, and then the closed version of it. Yeah, and the other thing too is I wouldn't add color on these right now. Yeah. Just, you, you're, you're still designing and then you're putting color in. You don't need to do color. Uh, right now it takes too much time you need to go back to design you were designing and you're in a thumbnail phase and you need to go get reference on that topic and then figure out that design and i would do something and then and then bring it in or you can email it to me if i might be able to read it over the thanksgiving break and take a look at it okay, okay. but you're back on design issues this this is almost medieval torture device yeah it is it looks like a medieval torture de and, and don't even get me started on what the hell the colors mean right here you know I know, but the colors on there, I don't know, starting to look like the Rainbow Coalition wife beater machine or something. You know what I mean? It's just, I, I, I don't know. It's just, you have all these weird colors here. I don't get the popsicle stick. I just make them a popsicle stick. And then just the whole spoon thing is just like, like a, it's a spoon smacker. You know what I mean? So, okay got to work on that dude yeah. all right thank you Thanks. i'm not trying to be harsh on you guys i just got to be a little honest it's going to make you better designers oh, yeah. you know all right let's see what's next here okay we got anthony very cool those are some good shapes in there remember eddie we we're talking about the importance of the shapes of this is the thing I'm missing out of yours, right? See these little thumbnails inspiring? You need those. I think that's a great design right there. You could you could tilt those wings back a little bit as well. And you know what's funny? Is it part of that design even crosses over into Robotech yeah. and Macross? It totally does. There's a similarity between the two styles, you know? Absolutely. Um, yeah, I think that's really cool. I, I, I like that guy too. Um... I've already seen a vehicle, though, that they already had a vehicle. It didn't have two wing or two engines on it. I'm not sure. The my only concern about that is it's pulling me a little bit into pod racing. Uh -huh. Yeah. A little bit. The bad movies. Yeah, into the bad movies. No. Um, I, 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 to me, there's something really cool. I like these two designs you have in the corner here. And I think this is cool, too. Um, I just don't like the fins being so straight. If there's a way to angle the fins a little bit to get them working and i think that could also be fun but that's starting to look a little bit like the despicable me vehicles having the separate pod and whatever so i think you're on to something um I, I i you know i do like this guy here i think he's pretty cool too i mentioned you before when i saw it the perspective's a little off from the back there yeah you know because if we draw a line going across this way that axis line and then you get over here and it's it's getting there but I would just double check it, you know. Um, I feel like there's more that could be done. Even if you took this vehicle, you still have some, you know, straight lines going all the way across. What if this curved into here a little bit more, you know what I mean? Just look at that. What if that curved in there and you had a curve that came down? You have lots of these cool curves in here. What if we find a way to accentuate them a little bit more, you know what I mean? Smooth them out a little bit more. Just right there, look at that body line. See that body line come down and connect to here? And look at that. Look at that there to there with that curve. That just changed the look and feel of the vehicle. Yeah. It totally streamlined it. So I would probably do a streamlined pass on that. And then what if you drew this guy and then streamlined him? Too. That could be an option, right? Okay. Yeah. Um, so that's the only page you have, right? Yeah. I still have to work on the transport. Yeah, because I want to see if I... Yeah, I don't have the transport. And then was this a combination of just good and bad or no? Well, I think it was... I was going for the good one, but the middle one, it kind of like got to the... It kind of has that pointy... 
this like feels look. yeah this feels like more good here yeah. that guy this what would be cool look put a round canopy on the front of that and then came in here put some type of cool wing tie fighter wings on the side that could be a great direction to go into I mean look you can have this round canopy in the front and the wings offset a little bit and they fall back more you know like this and then you have this round you know what I mean yeah. just a side view that's just a base side view or you can overlap even bring the wings forward a little bit more and overlap part of it over the canopy yeah. so I think you're on to something there but yeah a couple more passes a little bit more thumbnails Okay. All right. Thanks, Tony. All right. And next here is Christine. Kim. When you walk into a room, does it go, Christine? All right. I think these are, let's take a look at what you have here. Um, any guess on what she's working on? You got to guess it. What is it, folks? It's either Star Wars or Macross. Robotech and Macross. I'm hoping Robotech and Macross. Okay, good. Just making sure. So, like, please tell me you're not going for a villain ship with that. Yeah. Um, I think those shapes are gorgeous. I think those are really nice, what you have down there. Um, but then I come over here. So I see this guy. Explain to me what this guy is right here. Okay, protagonist, right? So I think you're on the right path, but being a protagonist vehicle, I would add you need some other shapes coming out of there that make it feel like a like a four-pronged death spear. You know what I mean? That's what a protagonist is going to have. Something they could take that ship and like, you know, not necessarily because, well, I was going to comment, or you go completely the other way where it's smooth and sleek. But it has to be one of the two. To me, you're already getting some pronged elements coming out of here. And I'm starting to like that and starting to feel very threatening. But I think it could be pronounced a little bit more. Okay. This guy right here is the one I'm having the... What's that? What are you going for there? Okay. You're on the right path with... I feel the seat and the mechanism. Now you need the armament and the missiles on it to be the, the battery. Like, that feels like a seat you would get in, but I'm not seeing, I need to see attached to it. So imagine if this was here, if I drew through the shape, and on the other side, you have this big arm that came out, and then I have this huge, like, missile system attached to it. You know what I mean? On the other side. So from a front view, it's like this huge missile system like this that ties in. And then here's the seat like this. And then here's maybe the tripod that holds it up. Okay. You need something more. Right now, this feels like the, a, an awesome seat, a great front design, but I'm lacking the, the rest of it. Does that make sense? Yeah? Okay, cool. That's an easy add-on. What about down here? What, what's this guy down there? Okay, and what's your feel on that? Um, I tried to copy from like how the Centauri had like the round, more rounded shapes. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you hit something there about the roundness. This here has a little bit more angle in there. But what's funny is you have a couple of thumbnails that I think are working really nice where you're getting some round shapes in here, round in here. This one, a lot of round shapes, round shapes. Here, we have a little bit of round, but then we get very angled. See that? And we get in here and there's lots of angled. So if you go this direction, just round the whole thing and keep it in that same visual library. Um, just avoid getting, you know, like, look at this. I thought that was really nice how you have that round with that little shell system around there. I think that's really cool. That's starting to work. Keep it in following with that design. Try, because I think what's happening here, but this is 
the hard part of the assignment is that a little bit of the design language of what you're doing in here is transferring to this. So you've got to separate it a little bit more. That's it. Other than that, I think these are great thumbnails. They're really nice silhouettes. You're really thinking about the shape. I do have that feeling of the show. Um, I really like this design right here that you're doing. I think that's going to be very cool. Once you get the armament system, or you, and it could be different armament. There could be a side there of missiles. There could be a, and then there on this side it could be like a bunch of missiles here. And then on this side there could be another like a, a Gatlin gun. You know what a Gatlin gun is? Like the three or five. Gatlin gun, like 20 meter, you know what I mean? That could be really cool there too. So it could be like do two things, you know? You're onto something really cool, okay? Those look good. Keep going with it. Just clarify it up a little bit more. We'll take a look at it when we get back, okay? Excellent. All right, so far that's it. Thank you guys for getting your work up. Good stuff here. I'm gonna stop the recorder. We're an hour and 25 minutes in, but I think it's important to do this type of stuff. Hopefully it saves right. So good work, guys.